Kate uh, Petula rejoins us with uh, more business news this morning. Thanks, Brian. Dublin Airport welcomed more than 3.2 million passengers last month, making it the busiest August in the airport's 78-year history. Passenger numbers increased by 6%, boosted by the introduction of 14 new routes over the summer and extra capacity on more than 50 existing services. Paul O'Kane is Chief Communications Officer with the DAA. He joins us on the line. Good morning. Good morning, Virginia. Paul, does Dublin Airport currently have the capacity to deal with this continued growth in passenger numbers? Like, like all airports, we're, we're enjoying, well, like, we're always investing on in new capacity. So at the moment, we're actually enjoying the fruits of the success, but that success brings its own challenges. So we're planning to invest very significantly on new capacity in the short term. We're, we're, we're about to start consult, consultations with our airline customers on nine, a 900 million investment in new capacity. So that's on new boarding gate stands, a new boarding gate areas, aircraft parking stands, taxiways, and some modifications to the existing terminals. So our own plans are to invest heavily. And as you say, we, we handled 3.2 million passengers in August, which was the busiest August ever. We also had a similar number of passengers in July. So between August and July, effectively the entire population of the island of Ireland passed through Dublin Airport. So we're enjoying record uh, passenger numbers, and that has a hugely positive impact right across the economy. Uh, you may have noticed earlier in the, the month, the uh, Tourism Ireland, we're talking about the, the record visitor numbers to uh, the Republic, 6.6% increase in visitors. So the passenger numbers that we welcome at Dublin actually translate into visitor spending and then visitor uh, traffic right across the country. Yes, and earlier this week, Aer Lingus and Accountants EY published a report saying that developing the airport as a transatlantic hub could generate $18.6 billion for the economy. Are the airport's expansion plans fit for this purpose? Absolutely. I mean, I was actually at the pleasure of being at the Aer Lingus launch earlier in the week and, and their chief executive, Stephen Kavanagh, was saying their plans and our plans are completely aligned. It's national aviation policy to develop Dublin as a hub. And actually, we're already doing that. If you look, this year we'll have about 2 million transfer passengers at Dublin Airport. And that's a business that didn't exist back in 2011. So that's 2 million passengers who don't begin or end their journey at Dublin. So they're using Dublin as a hub and then flying on many of our, on many of our flights that we have across uh, the transatlantic flights. So this summer, for example, we had 10 airlines operating 446 flights to and from north of 20 destinations in North America. So we're investing heavily to expand that business. We have some that already have four new North American destinations next year. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got plans to invest about 900 million euros in expanding new capacity at the airport. And one of the really fantastic things about growing Dublin um, as a hub, aside from meeting government policy, is that it insulates the, uh, the Dublin airport operation from any potential slowdown in the economy because those passengers aren't emanating from or coming to Ireland. And the other thing is, in relation to the hub, that that underpins the viability of new routes. So it means airlines are more likely to launch new routes to and from Dublin, and that gives businesses based in Ireland better choice in terms of uh, connectivity and frequencies. What physical infrastructure is needed to make the airport a hub? What would passengers notice passing through the airport? Well, basically, we're, we're investing in a range of areas. So it'll be aircraft boarding piers, parking stands. Parking stands are particularly important because obviously a lot of the uh, transatlantic traffic for a hub is, is on a, a wide body. But one of the advantages that Dublin has is the new generation of aircraft are now able to, to uh, take transatlantic flights on, a nar- on narrow-bodied aircraft which have a much longer range. So we'll be adding aircraft parking stands for both narrow-bodied and wide-bodied aircraft. We'll be building aircraft boarding piers and making some modifications to the existing terminals. But one of the advantages we have in terms of a hub is our location. For a lot of people in Europe, it makes complete sense to fly through Dublin as you're flying in in the right direction. And also, uh, we have US CBP, which is a product that no other capital city in Europe has. And they can, if they're traveling to the United States, they can avail of US CBP in Dublin. And then when they arrive in, in, in the US, the first queue they'll encounter is the taxi queue. And what about a new runway? Has a contractor been appointed? We're working hard um, on the procurement process for a new runway, and we'll be announcing uh, the placing of that contract in the very near future. And when is work likely to begin? We should have the contractor on site in the fourth quarter of this year, and the work will either start then or, or very, very early next year. So it's all steam ahead in terms of the new runway. Paul O'Kane, Chief Communications Officer with the DAA. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. I'll have a business update at 8.30, but for now, back to you, Audrey.